We are all set to start our session two of the day, rising to the top of corporate hierarchy within in-house legal teams in market-leading brands. How have these women achieved what they have? And for this session, the moderator is Associate GC Cape Gemini Americas and Lead IP Council Global Cape Gemini Engineering, Ms. Lakshita Joshi. Can we please have her on the stage? Let's have a big hand for her. Ms. Lakshita is General Counsel and Head of IP Licensing at Nuclear Software, responsible for overall legal strategy and steering the company towards newer age IP models and licensing practice. Would now like to invite our next panelist, Group General Counsel and Chief Risk Officer, Strides Pharma, Ms. Sormishta Ghosh. Let's welcome her with a big hand. She contributes to us an organization's business goals by helping make decisions based on knowledge of the regulatory environment, by helping mitigate business risks, and by ensuring legal compliance. Our next panelist, ladies and gentlemen, General Counsel Tata Technologies, Ms. Anjali Balagopal. Big hand. She has been ranked among the 100 most powerful women in law in if India. Best Leading Lawyers 2022 and Powerful Indian Women in IP 2021 by WIPF. Warm welcome. And our next panelist, let's have General Counsel Clean Tech Solar, Miss Suchita Segal on the stage with us. Warm welcome. Such a warm, bright smile. <laughs> 13 plus years of experience working in top tier law firms in India and overseas. And Our next panelist, ladies and gentlemen, is General Counsel Ellie Lilly, India and Subcontinent, ex Pfizer, ex Mondelez, and ex Estity. Ms. Anamika Gupta, warm, warm welcome. She's the legal director and general counsel for Ellie Lilly and Company India, South Africa, and Sub Saharan Africa with 17 plus years of legal experience. I now humbly invite the moderator to kindly take forward uh, this session. Thank you so much. Um, I know we are really running behind schedule. So as women, we do so much of multitasking that this is also a part of our, uh, you know, it's inherent to us keeping track of time. So I'll keep all my panelists here uh, on their toes and I'll keep sort of nudging you if you're uh, exceeding the time limit. But apologies for that in advance. Uh, Pardon my intrusion. But may I request everyone to keep the mic closer to your mouth so that sure. all of us can listen and can, it can be recorded. The camera is right there. So the sound needs to reach far and wide. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, all right. Um, so, you know, it was a wonderful panel before us. And I think um, that also sort of puts us on the spot because most of the uh, things that perhaps many of you would like to talk about are already covered or... Uh, but again, those are anyways the general themes that, um, uh, you know, we would like to talk of. Everyone here will share their personal experiences. One observation um, that I had as I entered this room and even now uh, as I'm sitting here and looking uh, across uh, the room, uh, uh, it's interesting that it is um, a women leaders and lawyers summit and I only see very limited uh, men on the floor. I don't see, in fact, there's just one, you sir. Thank you so much. Uh, big applause and thank you. Thank you. We need more men here, you know, because um, that's also a part of um, how we change the ecosystem. Uh, uh, a, a, a general issue also, uh, which we've encountered, and I think I can speak for all of us, is that uh, men and women also sort of think differently. They have different perspectives. Unless we understand as, uh, and I would go back to, uh, you know, circling to what Manjuri mentioned, understanding that game and then trying to figure out a strategy. I think pretty much the same way. Men need to understand what are the struggles that we face? What are the challenges that we encounter every day to be able to then make a difference to this ecosystem? So it's always a collaborative exercise. It is always a collaborative progression. Any development for that matter can never happen in isolation. And uh, that's why three cheers to you. Thank you so much for the support. Uh, sir, uh, if we can have your name, that'll be wonderful. 
Renjan, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, uh, without much ado, I'm going to sort of just go around the panel and uh, it's going to be very fluid. If any one of you feels that you have additional thoughts or insights to add on, feel free. We can just uh, sort of pass around a mic and feel free to add to your, uh, you know, to the experiences of the panel. Um, I think uh, uh, what you see here in itself is a very diversified panel. We have uh, women that are leading companies on the manufacturing side, IT, and so on. And, um, you know, we earlier thought uh, the best way would be to go alphabetically on this panel because that also seemed very easy. Um, uh, uh, but I, I would probably now go like this from uh, left to right, uh, you know. Uh, and start with you, Sharmishta, if you could share with us uh, your journey. Uh, I know that your role has grown beyond purely legal role. Uh, so if you could share with us how you graduated from just sort of uh, heading the legal division to also managing a critical function for the group. And uh, what has been your journey? What are the challenges that you faced? And also, if you could share some of the opportunities that lie ahead. Thank you, Lakshika. Uh, so, I think it is good afternoon for all of us. We are running uh, really late. And I did uh, mention to Lakshika that since the previous panel was so good, and they touched base on every issue, which kind of, you know, will also be the journey when you not only want to be at the top or you want to achieve that aspiration, from going... Uh, from the bottom to the top, some of them were, you know, also narrated. So I, I would believe that uh, Manjuri did touch base. All of them actually touched base that you have to go beyond legal. You have to understand the stakeholder. You have to understand the commercial part. So I have been part of listed entities um, through my in-house uh, stint, except for Dell. Uh, and I do have a decade of um, litigation as well as a, a law firm background uh, being from Delhi itself. So first and foremost was the willingness to take up challenges and change the mindset which I myself had. I didn't look outside. I first looked at myself. Can I be a practitioner and then move into in-house? Then uh, in the current role where I am, uh, the first and foremost was obviously get familiar with the board, uh, with independent directors. So in my previous stint in Schneider also, I had that privilege, um, you know, interacting with the independent directors, being the person who was always on the board as an invitee. Uh, from there, coming into an organization which is amongst the top 500 listed entities in India has global uh, work. And uh, I agree with the upskill part of it. I did not know any of the geographies where we do business. Uh, it is purely, uh, you know, hands-on and the uh, sole uh, contribution initially, and then you pick that up. I guess when you do all of that, uh, even a board which consists of veterans, you know, in the industry or otherwise, who are called rock star as independent directors, very uh, senior persons, they don't mind when the, your name gets suggested uh, by the organization uh, that let her do beyond. And it is not her and his, I agree with that also. After some time, when you are part of the management or the seniority, uh, they'll stop looking at you from the gender perspective. That's a given. Nobody will look at you as a woman at that point of time. It is only the value you bring. And when it is suggested that let her be the chief risk officer, where I don't even know the R of risk, uh, don't understand that new function which is coming up today. So it is from purely hands-on level. There is nobody else to help you. It is an organization with 70 entities globally. You have to handle the global risk. Um, you have to learn from the bottom. So first and foremost, it is the challenges. And uh, one quick tip I can give from my personal experience is that when something was mentioned to me, will you do this? Will you do legal? Will you take up the secretarial uh, function? I am not a company secretary. Uh, will you? Uh, it's not even will you. Uh, we feel you can do it. So that means you have already tried to bring value to the organization before that. And the gravitas part is something which I still am learning. I have not yet learned that completely. Uh, so when the risk part also came, it came with that type of question. I have never negotiated on the other parts of the job. You know, I, I have seen um, many colleagues, and I will not say it is a gender issue. They'll first negotiate the what is it, uh, what is in it for me. I have not done that. 
rather i have taken up the challenge proven myself and automatically things have come on my plate it has been given to me so i will simply say that um, that has been my journey that it has been uh, uh, it has been asked of me i have delivered and i get everything else on plate and why i am saying this and i'll i'll close my uh, discussion with that is today i have shifted to a, another city where my organization doesn't exist not a single person i'm continue to be in the leadership uh, role continue to be in the leadership council continue to work with the independent directors who call me directly they know i am not sitting in the corporate office i am not sitting in any office whatsoever but i am part of the whole leadership and i am one of the few uh, few means less than 5 i probably am the topmost uh, woman leader in the company in the whole group so it is a unique situation which has been accepted that i continue to work away from the corporate office away from any office and uh, i just keep traveling so again ask for you know that i will do this i don't want to uh, leave the job but i want this i think asking is also another aspect as you grow in your career you have to ask for it and uh, we as women tend to not ask for it we think that asking is something which we should not do we should prove ourselves first so it's a balance again that you probably have uh, been of value to the organization to your colleagues um, and uh, then you know it you may tell them that i will not change on this i need this and now it's your choice and you do get it so you know we should look at it positively and try it not trying is the first uh, challenge which uh, all women at all level we need to give up so that is the first thing i would say and i will i have uh, people here you know my colleagues who have their own experiences in the same manner i think we'll try to cut the time down thanks sharmishta those are very interesting thoughts i mean it sort of uh, directly leads to uh something that was uh, popping in my mind as you were speaking uh i think the challenge is not only uh, uh being a woman leader the challenge uh for me has been threefold one uh women leader of course as uh, we all know two um you're a lawyer you're a legal woman leader you you're not someone who's doing business development you're not someone who's doing sales you're not someone who's doing marketing you know so you have to put your foot down at times you have to know to say no uh, i'm not saying be aggressive about it but you have to put your foot down and say that certain things may not be possible or need to be done differently you have to do you know wear your compliance hat you have to also look at regulatory ecosystem so that's the second challenge and the third one is that we are indian legal women leaders the third i said we are indian i work with a global organization and why i say that is i think culturally and sharmishta this circles back to your point we are brought up to be givers you know whether it is at home whether it is within a family elsewhere we are brought up to be givers you know whether it is to our guests and always sort of think of and put others first and then think of your needs so these are three um uh, challenges which so, uh, sort of pose a conflict at times when you're thinking of um uh, uh, go moving up that corporate ladder as a leader within the legal framework and within the indian societal sort of uh, uh, socio economic cultural uh, background that we are up against so um, th th these three things and and all of us uh, sort of share that story but uh, here we have women who then uh, been able to sort of accomplish what they did and what they are continuing to do against this backdrop and that's what brings me anjali to you if you can sort of um, uh, share with us how you uh, how you balance some of this how you've managed to strike that uh, you know work life balance the need uh, and and you know to put your needs first and ask for and seek or reach out for help garner the support of uh, your peers your teams and even the management uh, at times if you could share that it would be helpful thank you lakshika and first of all thank you legal era for having us all here it's a great opportunity to be here with all you wonderful ladies 
um so i think to first first to answer your question rakshika i would say i've been fortunate and like a lot of us i think in this room who have had the opportunities to work with uh, you know great organizations great leaders great mentors managers teams to uh, you know be at this forum and at this platform while i don't believe you know we all have a learning curve while yes uh, grateful for this honor i think at uh, every point of our career you know you make a decision uh, you have to sort of uh, navigate your career and at least at my side i spent a large part of my career with infosys and this this sort of title for this um, panel really resonates because i literally did sort of make my way up navigate my way up in the legal department doing different uh, you know uh, biting my teeth into various kind of uh, you know issues different legal issues and one thing that uh, sharmishta sort of i think alluded to is very very critical i think being able to sort of raise your hand and say that you're willing up willing to take up a challenge i think that is extremely important given the fact that uh, it is sometimes a male dominated uh, you know organization a department i think more women doing that allows us to become uh, you know representing ourselves to be able to take that challenge which perhaps men would not think twice before doing but i think somebody in the earlier panel said we strive for perfection we strive to be taking all the boxes for those for the eligibility criteria and then we would be comfortable or confident to do it but i think it is important to do that take challenges take risks i have done that and i think that i have seen has helped me sort of reach um, you know a successful position also i feel um, you know it comes with failures but you know what hey failures is a way to learn and if you don't fail you don't i think that resonates longer with you because you learn the lessons you learn what to do next right so i think that's a very important takeaway i would uh, say the other one would be uh, i think inherently as women we are problem solvers right so i think and the the legal profession especially in house as most of us here are is to solve a problem right to give a solution whether you are a lawyer in that room you are a business partner to solve a problem so whether there is an issue legally or not you have to kind of come up with a solution so i think there again that's we should play to our strengths so i know while a lot has been said about you know in the first panel i just wanted to bring a different perspective that we should play to the strengths of a woman and bring that uh, and i think you will see that that helps thank you um uh, that sort of you know uh, uh, a, a general sort of uh, tone that i hear in the room from the earlier panel and also now uh, hearing both you sharmishta and anjali is um, and, and I, i don't know i somehow sort of just want to share my personal experience i think as women we are too tough on ourselves we are we just make it too hard for ourselves to be confident and uh, i'll share uh, this uh, because um, uh, i'm still struggling with it if if i wouldn't know uh, a 12 out of 10 you know uh, i don't think i'm competent enough uh, visibly if i have a male counterpart and he knows 8 out of 10 he's on the top of the world he knows almost all of it or he's above average but even a 10 on 10 is not good enough for us so we raise that bar for ourselves we expect a little too much for ourselves and i think that's how we're making life very tough for us and and, and this is something that i can now say of course uh, having grade up now so i can very confidently say this is also something these are shackles that we put on ourselves we pull ourselves down we do not come across very confidently uh we do not take on these challenges confidently because we have sort of uh you know uh, had set a high bar for ourselves whereas a- at a certain stage you realize that uh it's okay to not know everything it's okay to not be a 10 on 10 it's all right and no one is by the way so um, uh, you know if there is someone they are surely pretending to be and it's okay to say that you don't know it's all right perhaps as we were um, uh, junior lawyers or attorneys and trying to climb our way up the ladder 
we took it too hard on ourselves we thought that we cannot raise our hand to answer a certain problem unless i have reviewed all aspects unless i have had all the answers no that's not how it works you are entitled to your opinion you are entitled to whatever you bring whatever that value is to the table even though you may not know everything and you're also entitled to say in a certain position if you're approached by the management to say well you don't know you'll have to check and come back to them and i think uh, with that i want to move on to uh, you uh, suchita if you could share uh, with us your journey and how you've come so far um uh, you know uh, in a sector which anyways uh, you know is uh, very male dominated and at times um, uh, you know there is a lot of sort of um, nuances which are gender based how how have you struggled or uh, paved your way up through those thanks hello so i think this question is very interesting because personally i am someone you know um who's like do i know everything have i read up everything i can read up on this um so i started my journey as a in private practice in law firms as a project finance lawyer and then when you move in house you obviously are not restricted to like one vertical of project finance right you start doing mna you start doing litigation and uh, i remember when i was like on my first mna transaction i was reading up everything i could read about everything right and you never know all the answers right so the point being that you're so hard on yourself that before you go on to the negotiating table or you're marking up a document you know you're just like you don't you're in, you sort of let your instinct go and you're like let me read up on this and see that you know i've got everything right so i think as you grow in the profession and especially when you're reaching a leadership role you need to you know empower yourself as neera said you need to bring confidence in yourself that you know you will handle it i think there's a very nice quote i read some time back which says that you know when you think oh i don't know this what will happen instead of that say oh i don't know this i will figure it out and i think that is very empowering and that's something which has helped me a lot um so over, and especially when you take risks right when you go to new areas say for me i went from project finance to mna to litigation and that gives you a lot of confidence also that you will be able to figure it out as you move along right nothing is impossible nothing is rocket science you will be able to figure it out and then you also need to understand you know the commercial side i've always seen business teams and you know or other project development teams those are the sort of relevant ones in my sector when they see you're trying to figure out something they always come forward and help and it's never a male female dynamic there if you're trying to figure it out they will always come forward and you know explain things to you um so i think that journey of of you know saying that it's okay if i don't know and i'll figure it out and also being able to do different things and pick up different skill sets along the way really helps so when you move to a general counsel to uh, you know position where you're in leadership where stakeholders are asking you questions your team is coming and asking you questions you learn to sort of you know manage situations even when you are not entirely sure what the correct answer is and you also learn to sort of handle your team and tell them that you know you will figure it out so you need to take on more challenges but you will always you always need to be confident that you will figure it out and i think as a as a general counsel that helps you but it's really important because it helps your team so i think i think that's the most important thing because it empowers your team as a whole thank you suchita anamika what are your thoughts on this and would you like to share how you've navigated uh, your challenges and moved the way yeah so you? so i belong to pharma sector and uh, you know i work in eli lilly which is a global uh, pharmaceutical i worked in pfizer for about 10 years worked in cadbury which is mondelez handled their chocolates business extremely fast moving and these are market leaders you know whether it's you talk about dairy milk you talk about oncology products of pfizer today of course we know uh, or in my current organization we are leaders in diabetes and uh, oncology um and pharma sector generally somebody called uh, you know leaderships as old fashion somebody said uh, veteran uh, we call it uh, vintage <laughs> you know so uh, it's it's vintage and i'm sure you would completely agree now in a vintage organization we have ourselves uh, and uh, 
you know, as, as lawyers and uh, or I don't know how much I want to really say women, but definitely as lawyers. And, and I feel that um, it's, it's a great challenge uh, when you have market leading brands, when you're working in a tough competitive environment outside and inside. You know, your business would want and expect so much out of you. Uh, OPEX will always be constrained. Uh, targets will always be stretched. <laughs> and uh, you would, your business would want to come up with very creative solutions, very creative programs, and want us and our help that, uh, you know, now make it happen uh, legally. So, um, and I think it's, it's a fantastic, massive platform for all of us to show uh, our skills, our capabilities, and, um, and show that how much we can really multitask, what kind of linear thinking we possess, uh, you know, how much can we actually be curious, uh, how much can we partner with the business. So, uh, so I feel that is definitely one of the aspects that I would say that let's not be scared or conscious or fear such competitive environments or organizations and you know issues that we deal with it's it's fantastic it's exciting and i think the more excited we are the more uh, you know we will start thinking of solutions uh, that is first but that also leads me to the second point which i want to share is about the changing landscape of in-house councils you know as general councils as i think many of my colleagues here also shared we are not lawyers, lawyers, when we are in-house counsels. They don't want law. They don't want to know what the law is. They want to know whether they can do it or not, whether they can carry on, whether they can continue, or what else can they do, what is possible. You know, something which is impossible, can we provide those creative legal solutions to them? You know, can we really enable business? So instead of actually teaching them the law, uh, it's about partnering with them. And, and that, I think, is, uh, is, is, a, is a great changing era in, in legal space that we should really, really make a difference in. And I think because we as women are curious, generally, I think that it will really, really play to our stride that how much boldness can we actually show in our work? How innovative can we be? How can we actually help the business? Uh, you know, so we, so I think this is uh, fantastic that we are really here in this space and today talking about our experiences. When I talk about my journey, I remember this very particular instance when I was an intern. I started as an intern in Pfizer and ended up spending 10 years. Um, and um, because I felt that now I have learned, now I must contribute. And when I was there in my, uh, so-called uh, vintage boss, <laughs> uh, the then legal head, uh, you know, he said, well, I, I asked him, I went, there was a fire in the belly. And, and I went to him and I said, you know, give me more work. You know, I want to really strive. I want to learn. And he said, you're an intern. You're a liability. You know, I don't want to check your work. So just do what you're told to do. And if I would have been discouraged by that statement, I don't think I would be sitting here. You know, so it's about how, rather than emotional, how we can be emotionally intelligent. And the professional, the corporate world will throw, it, throw at us like anything. It, and if we are emotional, it will backfire. But if we are not, we are going to be offensive rather than being defensive. So I think as women, we must learn to uh, not constantly live in this consciousness that, oh, I'm a woman. Oh, I'm being prejudiced. Oh, there's a bias. We can't work like that. We can't live like that. You know? I mean, if you, even if you look at the statement, focus on law and excellence. My former boss in Pfizer, she was a Harvard graduate, and I learned a lot from her. And she told me that, Anamika, if you follow through your work, work will follow you, irrespective of anything. So whether it's gender, whether it's, you know, whether you're good at it or not, if you're good at your work, work will follow you. So what, that's exactly what we are here for, right? So I am very fortunate. 
I live, I work in an organization where men are a diversity, <laughs> you know, not the women. And um, uh, we, we have general counsel's uh, legal team. From my level to the global general counsel, all are women. And uh, so when we, when we have a call, there's a man, as in like a, a male colleague, you know, he's a diversity hire. <laughs> so uh, so I, I'm pretty fortunate from that perspective that, uh, you know, we do have, uh, I mean, I'm fortunate that I do have this environment to work in. But yet, of course, we do have diversity and inclusion, uh, you know, champions and initiatives, etc. Uh, because there are these subtle unconscious biases. There are these subtle, uh, you know, areas. But we are our worst critic. You know, we criticize ourselves. And I think uh, Lakshita said that, you know, we are too hard on ourselves. Yes, we are. We feel we have to be perfectionists. But I think actually, my own women boss tells me that you, you don't have to know everything. You know, you don't have to. Just do what you need to do and share with the business the way you, you should. And that's it. You know, so that keenness to support the business and to be able to partner with them hand in hand and help them is fantastic. And as lawyers, we actually have this keen ability to look, uh, you know, with a hawk's eye and also the bird's eye view. So we can see things what other functions cannot. And, uh, and I think that's a great quality. And I think all of us will agree to that, that uh, as lawyers, what we question and how we challenge the business, nobody else can. So, uh, so I think we should really be proud of ourselves and uh, really take all this fantastic platform that we have in our global organizations and complex issues and the sometimes very chaotic business and uh, their expectations in our stride and really, really, uh, you know, um, make a mark and make a difference. So that's, that's, it, it, that's at least what I would want to share. Thanks, Anamika. I think no doubt about uh, competence, about... Uh value that uh, we bring to the table. Uh, I'm just itching to ask each of you something. Um, even, even today, uh, you know, while we've come a long way, women have a seat on the table, they are uh, members of the board, they're uh, doing a lot more beyond their um, legal leadership roles as well. We have Sharmishta here managing the risk operations. Uh, uh, there's a recent uh, EY uh, June uh, 2022 report on gender pay parities and still it says globally men uh, for a similar job earn 24% more than their female counterparts. I I'm just itching to uh, pick your brains on that bit and if you can share your views on that, uh, this is really painful I would say <laughs> but sure go ahead. Uh, since this forum is uh, non-judgmental and we should be honest, I think that's true. Uh, we see it uh, not f uh, not only legal. Now that I am also on the board of a U.S. company, I uh, do have international operations, um, you know, uh, visibility. And as a chief risk officer, it's enterprise level. I know for sure that every function this happens. Uh, that is why I said that uh, we women don't ask, and that's what in every time a uh, I have men nowadays uh, coming up to me and asking how to manage work from home. They want work from home, okay? Uh, but will they negotiate their salaries down? Doubtful. But the woman will immediately say that, no, no, I don't need a high salary, but please allow me flexi timing. Okay, that's the bottom line because I interview people and this is exactly what happens. As a leader, my, my job is to make sure they all get uh, pay parity. Uh, because I will not uh, like to see the same situation. Th that's the inherent problem we have. That's why I agree. We need to let go of some of our own thought process. We are uh, we are a little insecure in a lot of things. Uh, and I like to see the new generation, which is actually go-getter. I love the women who are joining the force nowadays. They are very clear. And I like to encourage that. Because that's the truth. I think from our generation, that was the bigger truth. And... Uh, in few years, I would like to see that change with our daughters. And somebody mentioned daughters. I, I truly believe that our daughters won't accept that situation. And they will give back and say, no, I want the same. Because it doesn't matter where you are working from. You are delivering the same deliverable. There is no doubt about it. 
unless you have changed your deliverable. I don't think the deliverable changes. How you deliver is the question. So it's the truth, um, not only our profession, it is the truth for all professions which I'm seeing. Uh, and it's not current organization, every organization I became aware of that because of the confidentiality which I was uh, part of. I knew the offers which were going out at senior level also, I knew that there was a difference. Unless you are in public domain and your salary gets published in the annual report, then people try to keep it at a parity level uh, because of the public, this thing. But internally, yes, there is most managers, if they are not sensitive about it, uh, they tend to do this. That's the truth. Thanks, uh, Sharmishta. I think it's very candid and absolutely true. And I think I saw a lot of heads shaking in the room. So uh, I, I completely agree with you. And I think uh, twofold, right? One, the organization has to recognize it. And of course, the ones who are affected, so the women in the organization have to also recognize it. And I think forums like this, our roles in our organization is where we need to make that change, right? Because I think at an entry level, probably it's at the mid level that you start recognizing this dif difference or you know dis disparity in pay and then at a point you're at that point you probably don't have the ability to ask or you don't have the confidence to ask but I think as women leaders who recognize this it is our responsibility now to make that difference speak up if you have a voice you have a voice at the boardroom you have a voice at the management a leadership table you know you have to bring these issues up uh, Diversity is something I champion in my organization at Tata Technologies and this is something that me and my boss, the CEO, have spoken a lot about and while we see 30% of uh, diversity at the leadership team level at Tata Technologies, we've noticed that it's extremely low at, you know, probably not at the entry level but at the mid level where women tend to drop out and pay parity is one such area which we need to talk about, we need to have these conversations. It, it is an uncomfortable conversation, but I think it's our, it's our duty to do that. And I think the second point is ask, right? And I think we have to encourage again women to ask and not be afraid of asking because it's, ex, it, it's a recognition of your worth. So if you do not ask for it, if you don't feel confident enough of your own worth, then no one will. So I think it's absolutely important. And I think it's instinctive. You, if you think there is something that is wrong, you need to speak up and ask for it, whether it's related to your job, it's related to your function, your role, uh, or the pay. So I think that's extremely important, both, both aspects. Thanks. No, I completely agree with what Shurmishta and Anjali have said. And I think when you, when as a woman, you know, you go and you ask, that's the first step, that you ask for what you're entitled to, I think you also need to back yourself that this is the value I bring to the table and this is all the things I have done to help the organization. And I think sometimes men are more effective in doing that in terms of their jobs. They're like, you know, I met these targets or I met these KRAs and I did all of this. I think women also need to look at themselves like that and say, I have led, you know, XYZ transaction, met these targets. I think that's very important that you back your argument of, you know, why you're important to the organization and why you deserve that raise. Thanks. I think it's it's over the years the social mindset and uh, the, the the years and years of ta being taken for granted that has led to this kind of unfair uh, pay parity. Uh, I wouldn't say we are the only ones who are responsible for it. It's it's it goes both ways. Uh, but I I completely agree with my co-panelists that we have to stand up for ourselves. We have to show that I'm worth what I am worth. And I think more often than not, I don't know why. We can talk about many things, but when it comes to our pay packages and we go silent and we are not able to really, you know, uh, share and ask for it somehow. I also sometimes feel like that. And, and I think we have to really, really speak up on that. And secondly, take it up with our local HR and with our, uh, you know, CEOs and the GMs that we work with. You know, we are in those positions, senior positions to be able to do that. I actually pick the brains of my HR <laughs> on these issues a lot and um, and uh, uh, you know I have a very fantastic HR lead so who hears and listens and takes action as well so I think we have to be also ensure that the, this, this difference actually reduces and somehow it I don't know if it goes reverse but at least there should be equality. Uh, 
uh, you're right. And I think some of the initiatives, like there's a draft EU directive, which actually talks of um, gender pay parity and women, and it'll be made uh, uh, compli reporting compliance. Uh, you know, companies will have to report it uh, in terms of, and, and women uh, under that draft will have a right to actually seek details on how their salaries compare to their male counterparts uh, in similar roles and so on. So I think those will be some uh, very helpful uh, things. Um, uh, I'm aware of it because our company is uh, present across EU. So, you know, some of those things um, uh, are, are good in, in terms of uh, bringing in a conscious sort of move towards uh, corrections, uh, you know. Uh, so uh, I wouldn't say that uh, we are still uh, at a stage we, where it, uh, you know, uh, there isn't enough inclusion. Very um, uh, large number of companies, even Indian companies, are well aware of inclusiveness. They have a lot of very good diversity initiatives and are bringing up women not only at top leadership roles, but also encouraging them to uh, join back organizations after a gap without any questions asked and things like those. But but even with that, it is painful that in terms of uh, salaries for the similar kind of work we do, um, you know, when it comes to uh, commercial recognition, that sort of is lagging behind. But I guess those will be helpful. Um, any any other views or we've talked a lot about challenges. We've talked a lot about um, you know what we've been through in terms of our personal journeys. But uh, uh, just to sort of leave at a positive note, um, any one positive uh, thing that you think has worked to your advantage, uh, being a woman leader or, uh, you know, uh, leading the legal divisions or other uh, roles within your companies? I think the, uh, the basic mindset which we all women have of taking up challenges. In personal life also, uh, we go through a journey. Uh, whether we marry or not marry, we go through certain learning skills. I think Im that is exactly what we tend to implement in our uh, professional lives. Uh, it's a simple example that uh, we are taught as uh, you know the daughters of the house to upskill ourselves repeatedly. Probably uh, nowadays it's not so uh, much obvious. But now the boys are also being asked to upskill. So the challenge for us in future will be very tough for our daughters and the sons being at the same scale. There won't be any uh, difference. So the upskilling part is something uh, personally, if you're willing to upskill, then I think professionally also it works in your favor. So it's an inherent uh, thought process which we have to bring. And that is precisely what worked for me. Uh, that uh, willingness to upskill without waiting for the organization or anybody else to help you. That is the only thing which brings you up from, you know, through your career uh, journey. That That's the key uh, in taking up challenges. Thank you. Yeah, staying curious, I think that's very, very important. Yeah. I think one thing if I were to share is, uh, and I spoke about it very briefly earlier, is I think trust yourself, trust your instinct. Uh, you know, there will always be questions, there will always be challenges, there will always be people, you know, trying to, you, for you to second guess yourself, but I think no one knows yourself better than you. So, in any situation, I think everyone would have had this as part of their journey where, you know, you are required to make a difficult decision or take up a challenge or speak up. I think if, you know, you know that that is the right thing to do, then go for it. I think that trust and Self-confidence is extremely important in uh, a corporate world or in any career for that matter. Thanks. Um, I think as a woman multitasking, you do so much multitasking at home. Like when you go to office, you're able tight deadlines, multiple projects. You're able to handle it all, I think. And the other thing I think in terms of, because like we're all you know leading teams, I think the other thing I find is that with women leaders, a lot of time, you were able to reach out and connect with your team members on the softer side also. You know, it's not always all about work. They're able to reach out at you, you know, if they have a personal issue, etc. And I think that helps build a stronger team. So I think that's the other sort of advantage of, of you know, having women leaders. So maybe I can give an example from my work area. So I also support besides India, Africa and um, there's, there was one issue when I took up the role uh, that was stuck for two years. And uh, mainly because they 
they felt that legally we can't do it. And I joined, uh, as in I got that role, and, and I started looking into it and looked at the legal opinion, and, and I found something is missing. And it was just two, three words. And I went to the external counsel and challenged the external counsel. And I said, why didn't you tell us that this was possible this way and not the other way? Because the business kept thinking that they have to do it in option one, which was not possible. I said, but can we do it in option two? And, and external counsel said, you never asked us. And I said, but I'm asking you now. So is it possible? And she said, yes. And, uh, and I was like, you know, bubbling with joy that, uh, you know, something which was stuck for two years could now be resolved and the business could be helped. And the business was elated because uh, they felt that uh, here we have legal, you know, who's actually able to help us rather than we being stuck or being deadlocked, you know, or against a wall. So, um, so I felt that, uh, it was opening doors for, for us as business women lawyers. And we have to show that to the business and create relationships of trust with our stakeholders and with our internal clients where they're able to really, really trust us and come to us first and foremost that we know when we go to her, you know, we'll find solutions. So I think uh, uh, just like how, we, like I think Shalmishtha said that we are problem solvers <laughs> at home, you know, so Anything happens, anything, we know we can, do, we can make this happen or we can get out of it. So that's how we have to be professionally as well. And, uh, and I think it was a fantastic, there are many, many such experiences which I can share, but I think I don't want to take you away from lunch. But, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I feel fantastic about it that uh, we are able to do this as lawyers, you know. So, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing your wonderful experiences. I think it's been really enlightening. And um, also, uh, it is uh, good and encouraging to know that we've all gone through so much uh, in common uh, that we share. So um, I, I would just want to wrap up and not be between you and your lunch uh, with a big applause for all the ladies here in this room and this wonderful panel. Thank you. Thank you.